Hello, and we're going to be doing week five. This is a little bit more about recursion, but this time we're doing some graph theory as well. Um, so if you know anything about graphs, basically in computer science, what we're dealing with is both V and E, which is, stands for vertex and edges, a vertex being like a node or a little a dull dot, and the edges being the lines that connects the two dots. So basically what we're doing here is we have a graph of a city with roads going between cities um, and we have critical roads which are defined as roads that if they're destroyed it'll make it impossible to travel from that city to any other city. So here's kind of like a sample input. We're taking in nine vertexes with ten edges and then the edges between these two nodes. So we'd have nodes 0 through 8 since there's 9 or vertexes, whatever you want to call them and 10 edges, and here's the 10 edges that are between these cities. And basically how this sample output is being identified as, if I drew out a picture for you, you would see after you draw out all these nodes, 0 through 8, and you would make these connections between these numbers of nodes, you'd see that if the bridge between 0 and 3 was destroyed, you would not be able to get to city 3 at all because 3 is not in here at all anymore. There's no more connections to 3. So that's defined as a critical road. Same with 0 and 1. If you got rid of this, you would not be able to access city 0 or 3 from the rest of these. So that's a critical road. Same with 4 and 6. Um, 6 is not connected to anything else other than 4. It's just only connected to 4. So if that bridge was gone, uh, 6 would be all alone. And then 4 and 5, same thing. Um, right here you see that 4 is connected to 5, 5 is connected to 7, 5 is connected to 8, and 7 is connected to 8. So right here we have 5, 7, 8, and a little triangle. But there, 5 is only connected to 4. So if that bridge was destroyed, we would not be able to get to 5, 7, or 8 from the rest of the cities 0 through 4. So that's kind of bad. So that's defined as a critical road. So let's look through the code real quick. Um, once again, just like last week, I included a lot of test files for this. So you can kind of draw out these graphs if you would like to and just see what they look like. So I included four test files. Um, this one has a lot. So feel free to go through that. I'm only going to be going through the first one, which is the example in the PDF so you can understand what's going on. Um, so this is the explanation of the runtime using depth first search. So we'll be going through and just looking through the matrix to kind of see what we need to be able to be doing. Um, and if we, we test it, we delete the edge between them for each pair of vertices. And if it's still connected, then the pair does not have a critical road. But if they're not, then that identifies that pair as a critical road. So we're able to find that by traversing through the entire graph um, and seeing if everything is still connected. So when we remove one of those edges, if everything is still connected, then we know that that's not a critical road. But if it is, if we somehow return and say, hey, we can't get to every node in this graph, that means that that edge that was removed is in fact a critical road. And so we use depth for search recursive. And that's kind of explained out here. There's very good comments in here, so feel free to go through that code. It's on my GitHub. When we run it, we get the same little output that we got in the PDF, saying that these are the ones that are the critical roads. All right, now we'll go ahead and go through the next week. All right, so for week six, we got a couple things going on. Uh, one of the things we went over was Huffman code tree stuff. So O of n log n time, basically here's some code that we can go through. Um, this was just given to us. It's not something I wrote to do Huffman code. You look through that and understand it whenever you want to. This is basically some of the example outputs you can do it. All right, now we move on to the recitation. Greedy algorithms, good stuff. So train stations is what we were focusing on. Um, basically, what we have in this one is we have an input file and the first line will have a number which says this is how many train station schedules we'll have. Uh, so for the first input, we only have one train station uh, schedule that we're worrying about. 
And basically, we are going from station 0 to station 10. And you have to go in order, and you have to hit every station. So you have to do station 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and then eventually 9 to 10. Basically, you're trying to take the fastest route you can in the number of minutes, and each station will be given a time period. So here's station 0 to 1. It'll You'll arrive at 10, and or you start at 10 minutes, and then you arrive at 20. And then for the next station, there's two different train schedules. You could, If you got there at 10, you could take this train, and you would end up there, the next one at 30. And the second train says, well, if you arrive at 20, and you leave at 20, then you can arrive at the next one at 40. So basically, for this first station, you won't get to the next one until 20. So for this train station, even though there's two train schedules to leave from this station, you are unable to take this first one because you will not be arriving on time. You'll be arriving at 20, so you have to take this one. Um, basically, we're trying to do two things. First, determine if it's even possible to get from station 0 to station 10. If it's not, print out that it's not. If it is, then we'll print out how many minutes it takes us to get there as well as penalty points because the idea is that you're racing someone else. So say that you get there both in 100 minutes, well how do you know who did it better, who took the greedier solution? And so we calculate penalty points um, which are based off of how long it took you from the station you're in from after you started. So basically the sum of penalty times from stations number 1 through 9 is the number of penalty points you accrue. Um, that'll become more obvious as we go through it. So let's just go through this input file right now. You'll see that uh, we can take this station from 10 to 20, we can take this one from 20 to 40, we'll have to sit here from 40 to 45 and waste five minutes before we can take this train at this station because it's the only train at that station. So we'll have to wait, take 45 to 50 once again, we'll have to wait five minutes at this one till 55 rolls around. Then we'll leave, get there at 60. Awesome, this train is able to leave right at 60. And it's assumed that as soon as you arrive, you're instantaneously allowed to leave during the same minute. So you just hop off one train, get on another. Um, so we can go from 60 to 60, 65 to 65, 70 to here. And you see this station has two train schedules, 70 to 75 and 72 to 74. And basically the idea is that you would try to attempt to take train 70 because it's the earliest one. You want to be greedy and get on there as fast as you can. Um, but you realize that this ends at 75 and if you look at the next station it only has one train schedule and that's from 74 to 80 and you would be unable to reach station 10 because you wouldn't be able to leave this station at all since you arrive at 75 and the only one leaves at 74. So we would backtrack and we'd say okay well the only other train is 72 to 74 so we'll waste two minutes, which will allow us to arrive on time to be able to take this last one. So 74 to 74, 80 to 80, waste a minute, 81 to 90, 90 to 92, waste two minutes, and we'll get to the last one at 100. And so we'll take up however many minutes we wasted from when we started, and we'll accrue the penalty points. So we'll say something like, you arrived at station number 10 in 100 minutes with 549 penalty points. And it's explained in the PDF if you want to go through more and see how the penalty points are accrued. Um, they even include a JPEG for us to look at to kind of explain from station 0 to 1, you take 10 to 20, so the time equals 20. Um, from 1 to 2, here's the two train schedule stations. You'd have to take this second one from 20 to 40, so your time is now 40. Um, 2 to 3, you take this one, so your time is now 50 from when you arrive on station 3. 60, 65, 70, you take this other second one, so you get there at 74, 80, 90, and then the penalty, point, penalty points equals the sum of arriving at stations from 1 through 9. So we disregard this last one, and we say, okay, your time at when you arrive at station 1 is 20 minutes. After you started, your penalty points for this next one, the time after you started when you arrive at station 2 is 40, 50, 60, 75, blah, 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 blah. And then you get 90 minutes after you first started when you reach station 9. You add these all up together and you get 549. So that's basically how the penalty points work. So let's look at the code. Once again, 
Um, I'm just going to be using the sample input from the PDF, but I've included some very, very long and detailed input files for you to look at and go through if you want to. This one has five different train scenarios on it. Um, this one's got two, this one's got one, this one has two, and this one has one. So you can kind of see multiple trains and and see how they compare to each other and really go through the algorithm and try and make it as free as you can. So we'll go ahead and look and just see this code run. You'll see we arrive at station 10 in 100 minutes with 549 penalty points, which is the same as the test input. And basically what we do is we go through each train station and we look at each train schedule. So if it only has one schedule, we look to see if our arrival time is greater than that uh, starting time for the next train. If it is, then we can't make it to that next train because there's no available trains left for us to take. Um, but if it is, then we try and take that train. Now, if we realize that that train leads us to a station where we can't leave, we will try and go back to take another train and we will update our times for that new train if needed. That's kind of given in this scenario right here. If we get here, we will check and say, oh, we can definitely go from 70 to 70, but when we realize that 75 is greater than 74, we would not be able to reach station 10. We go back to this one and say, okay, well, there's another schedule for a train. There is 72 to 74. Does that one work? It does. Okay, so we now take this one and update our times and update our penalty points as needed. And at the end, we just print everything all out. So feel free to go through the code. It's a pretty fun program to write. Um, try and do it on your own first. But other than that, we'll go ahead and move on to the next week.